And so this moment is so potent. It's always so potent, so alive. Everything that is longed for is right here in this moment, this wildly alive moment. This moment is so full, so full of everything that is longed for. This moment is a love beyond imagining. This moment is a love that is vaster and more ginormous than the mind could ever imagine. It is not that the me opens to love. It is that the me is swallowed by love, taken whole, right? Like a whale just swallowing whole. cannot imagine the vastness, the wholeness, the completeness of this love. That love is wholeness. And that to be swallowed by this love, it's not someone's doing to let go into love, to surrender into love. It is to allow life to humble us. And in that humbling, we are swallowed in our entirety. The me doesn't survive such a happening. And yet what remains is the love that we have always longed for. What remains is everything that we have longed for. It is the remembrance of the true essence nature, who we are before we imagined that we became someone and that we were some kind of project and that we had some kind of purpose. The discovery in love is that love has no purpose, but to be love, to love. And this is our true purpose, is to be the love to live as this love, to be swallowed by the enormity of this love that leaves not a trace of what we have imagined that we were. To be utterly consumed by this truth, to recognize the wholeness of this truth. Mm that this is not a personal endeavor. This is not a me project. I'd like a little more love in my life. Yeah, that would be good. I'd like to open my heart a little more. It's that that one in the in whole entirety is swallowed. Whoa, right? It's, it's not something that you expect or can explain, it's like an upwelling in the heart that just consumes all that you imagined that you were. This is why concepts and learned material doesn't carry us into the vastness, the enormity of what we are. We have to leave our concepts and ideas and learned knowledge at the feet of life and be carried in ways that we cannot fathom or understand. It is an utter trust, a trust that is so big that we would even have to call it true faith. And true faith is this deep knowing of something greater. It's that which already knows the glory that we are and that somehow within we have a sense of that which allows this trust, this faith that allows a carrying deeper and deeper into the vast wilds of the unknown territory of consciousness. 
that this is not a journey we take with a map. It's not even a journey. It's always here now. We're not following a progressive, well-trodden path. Even though it may seem that many have trodden this path before, to truly follow in the footsteps of the great beings that have inspired and enlivened our hearts isn't to follow. It is to be here now so fully, so present, so utterly present that you are consumed into the enormity of what the great beings that have inspired us have always known that you don't follow in someone's footsteps. To know the glory is to be one with, is to meet in the resonance, in the frequency of the heart inspired, of the heart ignited. When the heart is ignited, it is a frequency, a fire, that when we step into, we realize that we're not following ideas, we're not following teachings, we're not following concepts. We're stepping into the fire of grace. We're meeting the great beings that inspire and ignite the heart. We're meeting them right here, right now, in the utter sameness. And that sameness is the glory of love. We meet undressed, unveiled, untangled in the glory of love. The glory of who you are is who you are without a mind that believes I am a me. The glory is the brilliance of love, the brilliance of divinity, pure and simple, right here now. And it is one glory. It is not a glory to be celebrated in any kind of personal way. It is a one single glory that we all belong to. And we remember this glory resting in the heart of love. And the love is not something that we have imagined or cooked up in the mind. That love is the felt sense of being utterly consumed and where there's nothing else but love, but this truth. Like you are crazy for this truth. You are crazy for the glory. Crazy for this knowing to dawn and be ignited, come alive in the heart that there's nothing else more important than resonating at the frequency of this remembrance, like an intoxication, an ecstatic intoxication to just be pulled in to something so compelling and yet not knowing what it is. And this is the curious thing that is so humbling is that we can be so pulled in by this frequency, this atmosphere, this bar of true spirit, right? Of true divinity, that we are electrified, enlivened, wild for it, right? Such a calling such a calling and this is where what already knows is so alive you know the seeker is born out of what already knows and yet the great distraction is we we don't fall into what already knows we keep seeking for something else keep seeking for something in the external some kind of experience, some kind of confirmation, 
something that will bring us the sense of getting what we want and feeling the wholeness in the way the mind has imagined and is looking for. But all the while, the knowing of the heart invites love to creep up upon us. And when we are least expecting to merge and be swallowed into love, we are taken. We are taken into the remembrance of the vast openness. We're taken so deeply into the presence of now, into the vast open landscape of consciousness. We're taken into our true self, where the resonance of remembrance is so alive. But it's not someone that remembers. It's not something that is understood by the me. It is in the disappearance of the me and the sense of separation that the enormity of this love is discovered. And this love is openness. It's a total openness where there is no separation, no more division, no more belief in me and other, me and God, me and love. And of course, that deep belief in a lack of love, the possibility of being divided from love, a belief in the possibility of being divided from wholeness. And we are invited here in the presence of being, the deep rooted ground of being, the wide open vast field of being, to not know, to absolutely not know. And in the not knowing, the resting here, somehow a knowing dawns and the knowing is true knowledge. It is bright and luminous knowledge. It is the radiant knowledge of yourself, the radiant knowledge of your true essence nature. And this radiant knowledge is the knowledge of love, a love that is pure. This is the openness, the wide open field. This is a field of infinite wisdom, wise and free. Everything is here. We do not need to know anything else because the field is absolutely resourced, full of all that is needed. Because all that is needed is to know yourself. To know yourself is the collapse of what you imagine that you need to know or understand. It is a surrender into life itself, into life eternal. To remember being the timeless being that just is. To remember being the timeless being that just is where nothing matters in the way that we once imagined. And yet everything is here and so alive, so alive with the remembrance of the true essence nature. This compelling pull into truth, to know this truth, to be this truth, to live this. A focus upon this truth, this love, beyond all else. So compelling, so alive, because it is the compelling pull to know yourself, to know the love that you are, to know your wholeness, to know your oneness with the glory, to know your oneness with divinity, to discover the ultimate belonging is to belong to yourself, not as someone, but as the presence of the glorious radiant light of all that is.
So there is nothing to do. We cannot imagine with the mind that there is nothing to do. There is nothing to fix and nothing to change. Nowhere to get to, nothing to achieve. That what we are opening to is the ultimate emptiness. The realization that all the value that we have put upon things isn't actually the truth. And that what has the most value is the absolute emptiness of this moment. Because in our courage to be so empty, we discover what is full here. We discover that love is here waiting to swallow every last tasty morsel of our imaginings and musings and meanderings. That love is here ready to devour everything that we have imagined that we are. And in that devouring, to take it all, to burn it all in the fire of truth and to leave only what is real. And in the ashes, we discover the most extraordinary love, the most extraordinary love, what we could never have imagined with a mind that is limited and small. We discover a vastness, a vastness that is not just big, it's not just ginormous, it's not just absolutely wildly huge beyond the imagining. It is infinite. Infinite is really, really, really big. It's ginormous, squared by ginormous proportions, right? And that's how big you are. That's how vast and unbounded you are in truth. Unimaginable no edges, right? And so it is to actually, actually in the presence here now, to reach out, reach out with your presence of awareness and see if you can touch the source of it all. Can you touch the bounds, the edges of how vast you are? Of course not, because there are no edges. That's just how vast this infinite unboundedness is. There are no edges. You can reach with all your faculties of exploration and you cannot reach right to the edges because any time you feel like you may have reached and reached as far as it could be possible for an infinite landscape to be, there's always more, just like the sky, a never ending sky, an infinite vastness. And you are that infinite vast being. And not only are you vast and boundless, you are timeless and eternal. You are not of time and space. And so to drop into the depths of the presence of being is to escape the play of the world, the moving, changing, the whole illusion of time and space. It is to drop out of the story of me and into the reality of who you are. And the divine reality is unbounded, silent, peace, and eternal, timeless, openness, always here now, always here now, just now, just this presence here now, nothing else but this. in the silence, in the stillness. It's not about the words. It's where the words are coming from. 
The words create a spaciousness. Allow the mind to settle. And it is in the spaciousness that you find yourself. In the wide open silent field, you find yourself. It's not about the words. It's about the resonance, attuning to the fine frequency of remembrance. That in the wide open space that the words are pointing to, you find yourself within yourself, in the silence, in the stillness. You find where we are one, where we have never been divided. You find the one that we are in truth. You find the one that you are longing for right here in the silence, in the stillness, a fine frequency, a resonance that remembers. And it is just a tuning to this frequency of remembrance and allowing the light to brighten and to start to really be felt as a luminous presence, your luminous presence, free of mind and body and full of yourself. Just here now, this presence, the presence of love that is just here, ready to consume it all. Nothing that you can do to prepare yourself. Nothing that we can do to prepare. It is just to be consumed in the fine frequency of love, to let openness swallow all that you have imagined you are, and to be the openness to let go of the identification with the content of experience. Let go of identification with the happenings, the story. And to be the vast open presence of being that you are. To be the vast open presence of being that you are just to be here, just as yourself. Here, the allegiance with love is really just about openness, to be here without labeling anything, without moving to identify or analyze or name anything in this moment to just be here so open, all-inclusive openness and an open receptivity that receives this moment. It's not about filtering out anything. It's a total inclusive recepting of everything that is here. An open receiving of everything that is here because this is love's way. Love's way is openness. Love's way is receptive. Love's way is to welcome. It is to care and share and give and to welcome. Love doesn't make exchanges. Love just flows. Love just loves. Open, receptive, caring, sharing, giving, naturally holding, welcoming it all. And so that in this moment, even the parts that the mind might find unpalatable, or want to push away, even those parts are welcomed in this presence of love. Everything is welcomed here. 
that this love is so, so vast. The openness is infinite. And the welcoming is beyond understanding. There is a naturalness here, a simplicity here, an ease, a smoothness, even a softness here. It is the kindness and patience of love. Love that has no agenda, wants nothing in return, wants nothing, needs nothing, because love itself is complete. We could say then that love can welcome seeming fear, because love knows only love. Love doesn't see fear and think, oh, what am I going to do with that? How am I going to handle that? Love just sees love. And love receives what might seem to the mind to be fear. Love receives it as love, in love. Love invites that we remember the deep allegiance love has with itself naturally, that love loves, that love never leaves itself. And so to make an allegiance with love is just to be here, there's nothing to do to make an allegiance with love. It's just to be here. It's already done. It's wholeness that is already whole. It is a fullness that is already perfect and complete in a way that the mind cannot imagine because the mind itself is functioning as a limited part it's like a tool, but not the whole tool kit, right? Whereas love is the whole. So love welcomes the mind because love sees only love. Love doesn't see anything that is divided or deficient. And so the mind and the fear that the mind can have is so welcomed here so fully welcomed here. There's nothing that the mind can bring forward that would have, have love turn away from itself. Love is here for the long haul because love is eternal. Love is here for it all. Love is here for absolutely anything and everything that shows up. Open and welcoming. Love is here for all of you to dissolve into. Love is here to take all of you back into the remembrance of the love that you are. And so there's nothing to do, nothing to be, just to be here and let love lead. <laughs> let love love. Let love move in the ways that love knows, a wisdom, an intelligence, and love flows as life, and love flows as the things in the life that the mind might find unpalatable and hard. The mind might say, well, that is not love. That doesn't feel like love. And that's okay, because love is right here still loving, right? It's this. Love is just here, loving and loving. And the mind might say, well, that doesn't feel like love. Well, that isn't love. But this is just a mind not getting what it wants. And that is okay, because even in that resistance, even in any kind of emotionality and struggle that can arise, love is right here, just loving, loving and loving and loving. And this little mind can dance and play and it can say whatever it wants and it can have its child mind tantrums and frustrations. It can move into anger and frustration. It can move into all of the ways that say, well, I don't want that love. I don't want a love that doesn't give me what I want, that isn't kind and patient. And all of the child mind can play itself out. And the glory is that love is still here, loving and loving and loving. 
and allowing this one, this mind to move in all the ways to be humbled and the humbling is love's way of freeing the patterns of protection and limitation. And it does not matter what the mind says, how it seems that the mind turns away from love, turns away from God, turns away from the glory, turns away from the light that is the true nourishment. Love is still loving. Love is still loving. And yet, if we turn away and we really turn away, then we will feel like we're not being nourished by love because we have to be open to love's nourishment, right? It's like if the sun is shining and we turn away and we barricade ourselves in the darkness and then say, well, I hate the sun because the sun isn't here, right? But it's just about taking off the barricades, right? Taking off all of the barricades, coming out of the dark room and turning to the sun and saying, oh yeah, the sun is here. The sun is bright. The sun is brilliant. Everything is light. There's warmth. There's brightness, right? It's about choosing love, saying yes to love. And of course, we can stay hidden away, cursing love for not giving us what we want. But at some point, we will exhaust that thread and be humbled into a deeper inquiry. And the deeper inquiry will bring us to a presence that says, okay, well, actually, maybe something else is going on here. Maybe there's another way of looking at this. And maybe the way of looking at it is to go inside and to stop feeding the mind stories, the, the mind stories of deficiency and lack. Maybe it's about coming to the presence of being and being aware of those stories, illuminating those stories and welcoming the child of the mind into the radiant sunshine of the eternal heart that is always bright and always brilliantly shining. Wherever there is a story of lack, it is an opportunity to fill that space with love. The trouble is, we tend to fill that space of lack with more things. We tend to fill that space of lack, of something missing, and of feeling less than. We try to fill it with more experiences, or we try to fix it. And of course, in that, we're not really opening to the emptiness. And it's in the emptiness that love comes and takes us into the remembrance of the vast boundless freedom that we are. So as the aware being, we can look upon the child of the mind and the struggles, and the upsets, and the hurts, and the emotions, and the misery in the belief in cause and effect. We can look upon it all, and we can shine the light. And in the illumined presence of awareness, we can allow the expression of these places that have felt broken, that have felt not seen, and all of the ways that the child mind keeps itself in holding patterns, we can receive it all and allow, allow the opening of these places that these are the dark places, right? That are hiding in the dark, thinking this is where safety is, right here, this is the only place, barricaded, barricaded in here. The places that imagine that love is not kind, that, that God is not maybe kind and all loving as a presence. And it is in the warmth and the light 
and the simple presence of being, the openness, which is the presence of love, that all of these places can actually start to open out of their patterns of discordance and limitation, that in this unmoving presence of love, that these discordant places start to open. And as they start to open, unravel, unwind, there starts to be a deep remembrance in the heart of the innocence and the purity right at the core of it all. And there starts to be the remembrance of a sameness, of an essence nature that is not dark after all, that the light shines into the dark hiding places and the dark hiding places are discovered to be the very same illumined presence. And this oneness is this sense of heart being open, more open and opening. But of course, what is really happening is not that heart is opening, but that protections are falling away. All the barriers to love, all of the ways that we have created conditions and protections and ways to keep ourselves divided, believing in a false safety, believing that we are somehow broken and divided from the glory. We start to remember in the deep rooted essence of the heart of silence, a wholeness, a oneness, a presence that feels holy. What does holiness feel like, right? How gorgeous to just open. How do we know what holiness is? It's just a knowing, right? How do we know what this sacred presence is? It's just a knowing that is here. It is the knowing of yourself to recognize your own purity, your own divinity, your own radiant true presence. We don't need anyone or anything in the external to confirm this. It cannot be confirmed. It would be like trying to explain something like the taste of a sweet peach, a perfect peach picked from a tree in the radiant sunshine to try to explain the sweetness of that peach. You can't explain it. You can only taste it. You can only taste and know it for yourself. You cannot grasp, grasp the subtlety and the incredibleness and the nectarine bliss of that sweetness without tasting it for yourself. And yet when you taste it for yourself, it's without question. There's a knowing, the holy presence is here. The knowing of myself is here. The presence of being is here. It is without question, the knowing of yourself. It does not depend upon anything external. It's an absolute inside revelation, an inner revelation that comes to be realized to include the outer as one and the same. But the inner revelation is where the knowing is. And in the inner revelation, the perspective shifts to include the outer. And we could say to realize that there is no inner and outer. There's just one all-inclusive reality. That we imagine the world is reality with the mind. But all that the world is, is the moving, changing. The world doesn't exist as something. The world is the moving changing. And when we realize that the moving changing has nothing for us, if we are looking and longing 
for the remembrance of reality. That we open to the remembrance in the still silent heart of being and we discover here the holiness, the reality that is divine. We discover here a love that is without condition and a flow of grace that is supreme. And here in this flow of grace, a flow of natural abundance. But there is nothing lacking, nothing lacking. And you start to recognize the inner revelation of your own wholeness, a remembrance. Is there anything wrong with you? Are you broken? Are you deficient and non-functioning in truth? And the realization here is no. This being that I am is whole. This truth is whole. And what does this mean for the mind that believes I am broken and that I have a story and I have to fix myself and heal myself? What does it mean? How do we seemingly integrate these two parts. We don't. We just allow the natural flow of intelligence to, in the presence of love, in the extraordinary presence of love, love itself brings the remembrance. What happens is that we don't transform it in the mind, in the psychological functioning. It's that this discordance, this consciousness moving in discordant patterns starts to resonate at the finer frequency of its open, true potential, right? Instead of resonating at that repeating, looping story of deficiency and lack, when we're in the resonant frequency of love, this that is discordant starts to remember it's like it hears a distant tune, a distant whisper of the silence that it remembers. And it starts to attune to that frequency, a subtle frequency at first. All that is veiling it like the emotions and old stresses start to purge and come to the surface so that they can clear out of the way so that this distant remembrance of the whisper of the fine frequency of remembrance, the remembrance of holiness can actually surface and the radiant light that is right here, right here in the center of this discordance can actually break out and beam its light. And this seeing can happen these radiant lights can act as a reflection and this can collapse, be completely swallowed into the remembrance, right? So everything is happening through an intelligence. It's not happening through my will and it's not happening through my work. It's happening through an intelligence. And so even if we are being with feelings that are coming up. It is not about the process that the mind might think is happening. It's about a total allowing and freeing into the presence of love what has been pushed down, what has been not allowed, what has been unexpressed. And when whatever has been pushed down can purge forward, surge forward, and express itself and it in the expression in the sharing of the wisdom in the being held it remembers its innocence it remembers that when it's curled up it feels like i'm a curled up broken little person i'm a broken little story i'm a curled up broken little record right i am the story i am the broken one but as it starts to open and unfurl and it starts to resonate and its light starts to shine, it starts to remember 
oh, I'm not that broken story. I'm not the story of lack. What I am is a radiant light beam. What I am is pure consciousness. I'm not the pattern. I'm not the images. I'm not the words. I'm not anything that's moving and changing. I am the pure consciousness. Let it be so. Let it shine in this radiant truth. Let the radiant truth shine forth right from the center of the discordant consciousness that I am not broken. If I believe I am broken and I curl up in my story of brokenness, then life starts to reflect the story of my brokenness. But when I open and flower and shine, life reflects the story of radiant shining openness. And there is a flow of grace. So we are responsible. Are we curled up and feeling and believing the separation and the story? Are we curled up? Or are we open and wide and receptive? Wherever we are living is where the reflection of life will be coming from. But don't be fooled by life because life does bring in things that are intense and hard, especially as we open to the incredible love that we are because love will bring in whatever it takes to crack open all of the shell and the armoring, all of the fear Love will move in whichever ways will humble us and allow us to know and remember the entirety of the love that we are. And so we can never really assess a storyline from the surface of life or with the mind. We can only be the presence of love and trust this deep faith in love, in one, one love, one love, one truth. And all that is longed for is to know this. And when all that is longed for is to know this, then we know that whatever happens is some kind of grace that is carrying us deeper, carrying us into the caverns and the cracks and the dark corners that we wouldn't otherwise be able to illuminate with the presence of our knowing. And so we come to realize that this is not a personal unfolding. This is not a personal remembrance, that we are being moved and moved and our lives are for the whole. And this is the, the great maturing that happens in this unfolding as we are humbled and as we deepen, we recognize that my life is for the whole. Everything that happens, everything I move through, everything that I'm carried through is somehow what I have asked for. And it is for the whole. This is a divine assignment, however tough it may feel. There's a knowing. This is love's way of bringing more love to the surface of life using the instruments of grace that are available and in our direct experience what it feels like is a remembrance of being the love of being the light of being the presence of being that is this open willingness to receive life as it is moving and flowing, an open willingness to receive all of ourself, right? Any part that we reject is a rejecting a part of ourself. Any part that we resist is a resistance or a rejection of love. 
And so we are offered this opportunity to keep receiving all that love brings, whatever it looks like, whatever it looks like. And it is our absolute knowing, our faith. Our faith, we could say, is our unspoken allegiance with love. It is the heart's knowing. It is the part of us that has never left the part of us that has never left and can never leave, that our faith is our knowing, our remembrance. And so it is when we attune and align with this faith that we are carried deeper and deeper and deeper into the wellspring of love's reorienting, recalibrating refinement That love has only one purpose, and that is to love and to bring love to all of the places that feel starved of love. It is to bring the remembrance of abundance and flow. It's to bring the wellspring of the one whole to all hearts in every way. So whatever we are invited into, we are invited to receive. To allow our faith, our unshakable faith in love, our knowing that whatever it takes, we have it. That the infinite unbounded heart can bear it all, can receive it all, can purge and move through it all because love knows only love and love is ever present unconditional and whole it is complete we are as love has created us we are whole in the presence of love And to remember our wholeness in the presence of love is to remember the love that we are, the divinity, the purity that we are. That in this resonance, this bar, this atmosphere of love, this fine frequency, the more that we can resonate here, this resonance, It transmutes and permeates everything. It refines the frequency of everything. So to rest here in this fine, subtle atmosphere of love, of love's remembrance of itself, of love's devotion to itself, to remember this frequency. Remember the frequency to let love be ever on your lips, on your tongue. Let the words of expression be love's expression, an expression of truth. Let love spill Tumble. Because love just loves. Love just loves. And you are the love that just loves. You are not the mind story. You are not the body. You are not the individual one that you have imagined yourself to be. You are love's eternal presence. And the knowing of this is in the heart that is infinite, unbounded, timeless, eternal. The heart of being that just is. 
to just feel here in the stillness, in the silence, love's natural, eternal remembrance of itself, the presence of being that just is, the fine frequency of your knowing, the silence, the stillness, the simplicity, just to be here, resonating, just lost, absorbed in this atmosphere of fine frequency, subtle frequency of grace. Be swallowed, be taken, be taken, allow the divine nectar of your knowing, of your remembrance to carry you deeper into yourself. Nothing to hold on to. And this is love's invitation, is to truly let go into the emptiness the blissful emptiness of love's remembrance. Many get to this point and turn back, turn back to the misery, turn back to the story. Don't take a look back. Don't turn away from the light. Just keep falling into the light, into the wide open light of your own shining radiant heart that remembers the truth, remembers wholeness, remembers the radiant wholeness that is shining. And shining here, this is where you are the beacon of this light. Shining as the divine reality shining at the frequency of remembrance. And this is where we can offer and support from this fine frequency. Nothing is needed. Just resonating here is the great glorious service to the whole, that your whole life is in service to just resonate here in the glory of the depth of your remembrance. That how it impacts your life is how it impacts all life, right? Because there is no your life that is separate. The impact is the impact that it has upon the whole. We move as one, one love, one life, one flow, of grace. And so resting here in love's glorious mercy, love's redemption, love's care, It is so emptying to just let go into love's mercy. That there is nothing to do, nothing to fix. Just to let go. Into the emptiness. The vast open field. Where true belonging is shining. A love so vast, so boundless, infinite, limitless, uncontained. Just to feel that vastness right now, the field of silence has no bounds, the 
you are the being that knows no bounds. You know only yourself here and now. Nothing else to know. To just be here as the silent being knowing yourself and be carried into the vastness of love's radiant presence. To know it as your own, the one, the only, the all that is, the perfect love, the spotless perfect love. That is the glory that you are in the absence of the me. The glory is here. Love's glory is your true nature. And the heart knows this. The heart knows this glorious truth. And so to say yes to the radiant sun to say yes to love's presence, taking everything and all that you have imagined to swallow you whole and carry you into yourself where you cannot know what this is or what it looks like. Love's love light is shining as the heart of wholeness. Love's love light is shining as the heart of wholeness. Eternally free, free of mind, free of body, eternally bright and radiant in the knowing of yourself. Whole and pure divine freedom. Just opening to the fine frequency of remembrance and resting here, resting here in the silence, in the simple, still presence of love's glory. Where we are the same, you find yourself inside yourself. One self that is shared by all. One love that all belong to. A wholeness that is utter perfection. Just this, the all that is, what is, just as it is right now. 